Hello, Ms. Hobbs' is Applied Physics class. We're going to be talking about magnetism and the source of magnetism today. Yesterday, we investigated how fields work and how they interact, where there is attraction and repulsion depending on which fields interact with each other. And we limited, realized that these fields have limited amounts of range depending on the strength of the magnet. A strong magnet is going to have a stronger field. A weaker magnet is going to have a weaker field. And these, field force, these fields actually are able to um, show forces and impact and move things without actually having physical contact. So we've talked about the properties of magnets, then we'll talk today about the source of magnetism and Earth's magnetic field. So today we're talking about the source of magnetism. And actually you guys are going to be doing something very similar to this, but it's going to be on a FET simulation where you're going to have a coil of wire, a magnet, a battery, and a switch and you're going to investigate how electromagnets work. Later on, you'll be actually making an electromagnet. But one of the things that we need to investigate is how electricity and magnetism are related. And uh, a gentleman called Michael Faraday actually figured this out in the uh, 1880s, and he explored how one could induce another and how to create a motor. So the idea is to use a compass to detect magnetic force and understand the field forces. Okay, so a source of magnetism is you are creating a current, and that current is flowing through the wire, and it coils through the wire. Okay, so you create a coil of wire around it, and the electrical current flows, and that flowing electrical current can then actually generate um, a magnetic field. So electromagnets are magnets that are created when there is electrical current flowing in a wire. And the simplest electromagnet uses a coil wire wrapped around some iron. And an iron rod is pretty easy to come by. They're also known as nails. And the right hand rule. Uh, to find the north pole of an electromagnet, use the right hand rule. So you can figure out how things are going to be attracted or pulled based on that. When the fingers of your right hand curl in the direction of the wire, your thumb points towards the north's magnetic pole. It's really important to remember to actually use your right hand and not your left hand. And remember that when you have, um, when you're trying to determine right and left, make sure that you make an L with your left hand, and that's going to be your left hand, and the right hand is going to be the other one. And you want to always use your right hand. I think in one of my college physics class, I got my left hand from my right hand because I was so stressed out, and that kind of made a difference on my grade. All right, so electromagnets are used for a lot of different things. We've seen them in dump yards where they use, are on a crane, and they can actually lift a car and then drop it is how those are used there but we also use electromagnets in toasters by changing the amount of current you can easily change the strength of an electromagnet or even turn it on and off so you've got a toaster there and a toaster tray is pulled down by an electromagnet while bread is toasting and when it's done toasting the electromagnet turns off and the tray is released fire doors in hospitals and schools also use electromagnets to release the heavy doors in emergencies so it's a big, fast pull. You'll see that our doors, our fire doors, are braced by a magnet. That's how the braces keep strong. And then when that current goes off, the door is actually automatically closed. So very easy to build an electromagnet. We're probably going to do this tomorrow. Uh, all you do is coil so that the coils are very tight side by side and close around a rod of iron. And in this case, we'll be using a nail. And we create a current, the current starts the electrons flowing, the flowing electrons create a magnetic field. There are two ways to increase the current electromagnet. Add more turns around the nail and apply voltage by adding a second battery. I can tell you if you just have one turn around a nail, that is not going to really create enough of a magnetic field to notice. As you add turns, the, the strength triples. And the coil of wire is actually then called a solenoid. Doorbells. Some doorbells contain an electromagnet. When the button of the bell is pushed, it sends a current through the electromagnet and strikes the bell. So you've got the battery, you've got the electromagnet, you've got the striker. And what happens is the electromagnet actually attracts the striker. The striker comes close to the bell and rings it. Um, all atoms have electrons, so you might think that all materials should be magnetic, but there's a great availability in the magnetic properties of the materials. This goes back to the minute physics presentation that we watched that talks about how things become magnetic. 
electrons in some atoms align to cancel out the other magnetic influence. So when they're all electrons are tiny magnets, and when they're spinning opposite of each other, they cancel out. So you want to have what's called open orbitals or orbitals that aren't filled. While well, materials show some kind of magnetic effect, the magnetism in most materials is too weak to detect without highly sensitive instruments. So some things are magnetic, but we just don't have enough don't have enough detail ability to measure them to see that they are. Uh, so we got an atom, tiny magnet, and atoms are differently aligned. When permanent magnets have their atoms aligned, we observe the magnetic forces. There are actual forces that work within that field. If these are aligned in different ways, they don't recognize the field and you can't observe those forces. In many materials, the magnetic fields of individual electrons and each atom cancel each other out magnetic fields. Lead and diamond are materials, are materials made of these kinds of atoms are called diamagnetic. So they actually cancel other magnetic effects. It takes a very strong magnetic field to cause the effects or very sensitive instruments to detect them. Aluminum is paramagnetic. Paramagnetic means that it will respond to magnetism, but not induce magnetism in other things. In an atom of aluminum, the magnetism of individual electrons do not cancel out completely. This makes aluminum an atom a tiny magnet with a north and a south pole. Solid aluminum is non-magnetic because the total magnetic field averages out to zero. Atoms in non-magnetic materials like plastic are not free to move or change their orientation. So they're stuck there, so you can never induce a current. And finally, you can see how when the atoms are aligned, you can actually have the north and the south pole. So these are electrons and metals are much more free to move than in other materials. So that's one of the reasons why they're more magnetic. Ferromagnetic materials have very strong magnetic properties. These are ones that we consider as traditional magnets. They're made of iron, nickel, and cobalt. And they're, all of their domains are aligned. So all the different individual pieces of that product are all aligned to one domain. Magnetic domains in a ferromagnetic material will always orient themselves to attract a permanent magnet. So they're always going to react. You're always going to see the changes that take place. Okay. The more of the atoms that are aligned, the stronger the magnet is. And that's how you can induce a magnetic current is to kind of overwhelm the domain so that they change. can only exist in solids because the orientation is what is dependent. And the easiest way to break up a magnet is to melt it because then you're permanently changing the orientation. So the biggest way to ruin a magnet would be to put it in the oven and get it to the melting temperature of the iron and that would make it non-magnetic anymore. Likewise, if you wanted to make a magnet, you would heat it up so that the iron was melted and then induce a current and that would make it magnetic. And then we've got bar magnets, so it goes south to north, south to north, south to north. So each one piece has the opposing pole, if that makes sense. It's not one continuous magnet. Each separate piece has its own individual, ma individual magnetic field where it matches north and south. All right? We've talked about how magnets work, what paramagnetism and ferromagnetism are, and how to create an electromagnet, and now you're going to be using the FET lab to do it. Thank you.